that was the worst shot up man he had ever seen. And uh, his uh, autopsy shows uh, a great many wounds uh, by a number of different weapons. Well, this took place in 1882, in March of that year. And the activity that uh, was going on was hot and heavy. In the previous October, the gunfight at the OK Corral had taken place. In December, Virgil Earp was shot and maimed for life. In March, Morgan Earp is killed. Frank Stilwell is killed. This is a busy time in Tombstone and Cochise County. But the question had always been in my mind, did Frank Stilwell kill Morgan Earp as the legend and myth said that he did? And if so, what proof was there? Every time Wyatt Earp would list those involved in Morgan's murder, he always named Frank Stillwell first. Why? What was it that Wyatt knew or thought that he knew? And were there other candidates that should be considered to have been the gunman, the one who pulled the trigger that killed Morgan Earp on March 18th, 1882 in Campbell and Hatch's pool hall on Allen Street in Tombstone? In December of this past year, I edited an article called Who Killed Morgan Earp, The Atrocious Assassins. And uh, it's received a lot of acclaim. And it ends with me revealing, finally, based on my research, who actually killed Morgan Earp. So there are many candidates, uh, primarily uh, we could talk about a fellow named Pete Spence, originally named Elliot Larkin Ferguson, uh, grew up in Live Oak County, Texas, but at other times Wyatt thought perhaps it was John Ringo, or Curly Bill Brocious, or any number of other men, and in fact in this article uh, I list almost 20 men that could have been the culprit who pulled the trigger that night uh, in Tombstone. That night that uh, Morgan Earp was killed in the, the pool hall, uh, about 10.50 p.m., uh, he lived for barely another hour. And uh, during that time said very little other than a few words whispered uh, to his brother Wyatt he was attended by three doctors, but they knew immediately they could not save him. The, uh, the one bullet that entered his body had done simply too much damage. And in fact, that bullet went on through and hit another man in the leg, uh, George Berry. A second shot went just barely over Wyatt Earp's head. You see, they intended to kill Wyatt that night too. And when I say they, uh, it was evident that there were several men in the alley and uh, the shot was fired through uh, one of the panels, glass panels of the door at the back of the uh, pool hall where Morgan and uh, Bob Hatch, one of the proprietors, were playing pool. So Morgan lingered for a little less than an hour. Uh, Virgil, who had been in uh, his sick bed following uh, his shooting in December, which uh, maimed his arm for life, was there. James Earp was there. Warren Earp was there. Um, some of the wives uh, were there. Doc Holliday was not. Uh, not sure where Doc was, uh, but rumors were that uh, he immediately began searching for who the culprits might be. One legend says he went around town kicking indoors. Uh, 
uh, where he thought uh, the culprits might be, but uh, that's about the limit of Doc's involvement on that particular night. When Morgan was dead, uh, he was transported uh, by his brothers and some helpers to uh, their quarters in the Cosmopolitan Hotel uh, on uh, Allen Street. Uh, the cowboy headquarters was directly across the street uh, at the Grand Hotel. The next morning, funeral plans were made, and it happened to be Wyatt Earp's 34th birthday. Can you imagine what Wyatt was thinking? Morgan was considered by many to be the favorite brother. That may be myth or legend. But he was certainly a beloved brother of uh, the four others that remained behind, uh, Wyatt and Virgil and uh, James and Warren, who were all in town at the same time. A funeral was being planned for the next day for 4 p.m. in the afternoon. In fact, funeral cards were printed uh, and distributed and for some unknown reason, the funeral was moved to 12.30. Some have thought it might be because of the train schedule and the fact that they wanted to ship Morgan back to uh, his mother and dad in California. And uh, he was transported that day uh, by coach to Fairbank and from Fairbank by train uh, up to uh, Benson, and on into Tucson. And from Tucson, he was accompanied by his brother James. So James and the body arrive in uh, Colton, and uh, Wyatt and his cohorts, uh, Doc Holliday, Sherman McMasters, uh, Dan, Dan Tipton, and uh, others uh, began to decide how they were going to go about wreaking vengeance on whoever the one, two, three, or more men were who had. Uh, killed their brother. The next day, Wyatt had determined that he wanted to get Virgil back home, get Virgil out of town. Uh, Virgil was already uh, maimed, as we have already mentioned, uh, never was able to use that arm at all uh, again. And Wyatt and the other brothers were well and capable of riding and seeking out the culprits that they thought were guilty. But they wanted to get Virgil and uh, Allie uh, safely to California uh, to attend Morgan's burial. So in transporting uh, Virgil and Allie to uh, Tucson, uh, they were accompanied uh, by Wyatt and uh, Doc and uh, others of what we call the uh, Vendetta Posse. And a vendetta it was. They arrive at the Tucson Depot, and there they find Ike Clanton and Frank Stilwell at the train depot. Ike beats a hasty retreat back to the hotel, but Frank, very unwisely, begins to run down the track and between some cars hoping to uh, escape any uh, possible confrontation with Wyatt and, uh, and his party. But unfortunately, uh, Wyatt came up upon Frank uh, and shot him dead. Uh, later, Wyatt would say that Frank pulled his pistol and was attempting to shoot him. But uh, when Frank was found the next morning uh, lying at the uh, train depot, uh, his pistol was still in its holster and no shots had been fired. But uh, one newspaper man said that Frank Stilwell was the worst shot up man he had ever seen. And uh, his uh, autopsy shows uh, a great many wounds uh, by a number of different weapons. Well, let's go back now to uh, who it was that might have killed uh, Morgan Earp. And as I said, Wyatt always put Frank Stilwell at the top of the list. But from that March 20th in Tucson began Wyatt's vendetta ride in which he killed several individuals. So the vendetta ride began. 
why it was out to get the one, two, three, or four people that uh, he suspected highly of being involved, uh, including John Ringo, Curly Bill, Frank Stillwell, Pete Spence, Indian Charlie, uh, Indian Hank, uh, and a number of others. The first one he killed was Indian Charlie, uh, also known as Judah Florentine, Florentino Cruz, or Florentino Sayas. But we know him more as uh, Indian Charlie. Next, Wyatt got into a uh, gunfight at a place called Cottonwood Springs, in which he claimed to kill Curly Bill Brocious, but he did not. Uh, Curly Bill lived on and uh, probably died of natural causes uh, many years later. Of course, that's a controversial statement that I've just made, and those of you who are watching may say, huh, he killed Curly Bill, and I know he did. But uh, I'm of the opinion that uh, he did not, and that's a story for another time. Well, after many years of research and study and discussions and arguments uh, and presentations and articles, I finally learned who actually did kill Morgan Earp. And it came about in a very serendipitous way. I was looking for some information on a tombstone character named Milt Joyce. And in that article was a whole lot more than I expected to find. In fact, a good portion of the article was not even about Milt Joyce, but was about Jack Stilwell, Frank's brother, and an interview that he made at the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 when he was there with Buffalo Bill. Jack was a famous frontier scout that was being sought out to tell his stories of Beecher Island. And in this particular interview, he said something that I never had known for sure, could not prove, and was still yet in doubt. But in this article, he said, and I quote, I never faced Wyatt Earp but once, although my brother killed Morgan Earp and was afterwards killed by the Earp Gang. And the story goes on with a, a lot of other detail. But my reasoning is Jack Stilwell was convinced that his brother Frank was the culprit. And if Frank, if, if Jack believed that, and he reported it, stated it, I believe it too. So I believe now we can end the question of who killed Morgan Earp with a solid answer, Frank Stilwell was the culprit.